Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making two 1830s embroidered chemises. Alright, let's cut a chemise. So I went ahead and I made a pattern, um, made being kind of relative, but images of the original. So this is my favorite chemise for the 1850s and 60s. I just don't like the really poofy sleeve. I usually get rid of that and do something else. But I like the way this yoke fits. That's usually what I use. And then I um, put buttons on it. But anyway. So I change it slightly. But this is my favorite one. And um, the original 1830s chemise shows a square yoke. Um, and I also have the black snail pattern. 1830s underpinnings pattern. So that one has a square net. But you can see the yoke is far too big on that one. So I kind of just meshed the two together. Took the simplicity one and made it a square neck. And I had to do a lot of drafting on the sleeves because the, the sleeves are entirely my own creation. Because clearly on the original you can see where um, the band kind of goes up a little bit. Yeah. Basically at this point it's my own creation. The sleeves are entirely my own creation based on the image. But we're going to go ahead and cut this out. I have some lovely cotton linen blend that we're going to use. And we're going to make two chemises today. So I'm going to start off by ripping myself some lovely, um, I guess the bodies of the chemise. So I need those 36 by 39. Let's see if this will rip. Because that'll make my life so much easier. It does. Alright, now it's time to cut the rest of the pieces. Um, these pieces I kind of, again, made up. Basically made up. And so, um, it's a mixture of the simplicity pattern and the black snail pattern. This is what my front and back look like. And then this is the sleeve band. The sleeve on the original is very interesting. So it has this band, but it kind of goes up. And, and there's a bordery on the band. And then there's like the fullness of the sleeve. But there's also a gusset. here working on the embroidery. Um, I got one chemise completely embroidered. Took all weekend, but I got it done. Uh, this one's going faster. Um, what I'm basically doing is I found a pattern, and I know it's going to be really hard to see because it's white work, but um, I found a pattern on um, an original, well it's from like 1814, so earlier than the 1830s, um, from a book. And um, I'll put the name of the book on the screen because I don't remember at this very moment. But essentially it had a pattern that looked almost exactly like the original chemise. And so I printed that out. I decided I did not want to do the satin stitch because I knew it was going to take a while. And I need this for an event in a month. And I have other projects to do. And I'm going to just start sewing as we talk because that's going to save time. Um, but yes. So instead I'm doing a feather stitch. And um, a knotted, it's not really a knot though. It's like a satin stitch little knot. Um, it's much more secure than like a French knot would be. I'm doing some cord embroidery. This is size 12, I think. Um, cotton pearl. It's DMC. And so yeah, I'm just doing a feather stitch in this little pattern. So the pattern essentially is very similar to the one, to the original one. But um, of course I'm just doing it in feather stitch as opposed to the sat stitch. So it is going by so much faster. The little dots we're going to do in a minute, they're the ones that are taking a bit of time. I've been working a lot with different types of period embroidery, trying to my hand at a lot of different styles. And um, so I took basically the seed stitch from Ayrshire work, whether it's, you know, it's Ayrshire um, or Ayrshire or Ayrshire or, you know, there's a lot of different ways I've heard it said, but that type of embroidery. The really pretty stuff you see on baby clothes. And so I've been working with Ayrshire, I've been working with Broderie Anglaise, and um, that's where I learned the seed stitch. And I thought that'd be a really good thing to do here because it's going to be super sturdy and it's not going to pull or come out, say, when I need to wash the chemise or really anything else. I'm just going to move into a seed stitch here. So I put these little dots where they're supposed to be. I don't know how well y'all can see my little dots, but there are dots on there. 
Um, it's just a transfer pencil. I chose blue because um, period references, granted from the 1860s, but period references um, seem to be pretty specific on the, the transfer embroidery patterns were in blue. Um, I had a red one, and since I didn't have evidence for red, I went with blue. So I bought a special one just for period embroidery. But I have the other chemise soaking right now, so hopefully it comes off. <laughs> this one, I don't know you can see on the camera. But I put the pattern like further down than it should have been, so I had to kind of guesstimate and move it up. So there's like these obvious blue marks on it. But I guess I could probably tell you what I'm doing for this seed stitch. I'm just over here sewing and talking about random nonsense. But let me get this one finished. I'll do another one with y'all. Okay. So I'm going in. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But um, it's hard to gauge because I would usually do like three or four or five threads. But because this linen doesn't have threads that are all the same size as linen typically doesn't, I'm including my original pieces of linen, um, it's hard to guesstimate. So I'm mostly just like playing with it about three stitches up, putting a little stitch there. And then right next to it, one stitch over, or one thread over, sorry, doing another stitch. Making them very even. And then I've been doing three across the other way. So I did two vertical and I'm going to do three horizontal and do one on the bottom then one on the top I think my and then one in the middle I think my original um, not my original but my book on Ayrshire work says to do two across and then two uh, or two vertically and then two across I found that it didn't really cover it as well as I wanted so I decided to do three um, horizontally all right, so let's go ahead and start working on this chemise, or the first one anyway. So I have my chemise bodies, I suppose, and I'm going to put the gusset in, I think, first to kind of see where this is going to end. See, the pointy part goes, points towards the hem, basically, and I'm going to try to run and fell all the seams in the chemise, so that goes to there. And then this part gets to be sewn together all the way down. Yeah, that's basically the gusset. So this is the underarm, giving some more space to, to move around, which is great. And so that's all going to get run. That's all going to get ran. Um, little itty bitty yarning stitch with some cotton thread, and then we'll fell it together. That just makes sense. So I have a lot more pinning to do. I'm going to scrounge around for some pins. Working on the chemise here. So I did get that seam sewn on all of them. Now we're going to fill it. So I'm going to just cut back by about half the seam that's on the, um, I guess the back side. So this is the, this is the back, this is the front over here. So I'm cutting it down by about half. Now I find it easier at this point just to iron this down. towards the back. Now I get to fold these raw ends under and create a bit of a case that hides all the raw edges. And we can iron and pin as we go. That's essentially what felling is. It's a nice simple way to get all those raw edges encased to where they don't cause issues or ravel. So I even, I've been doing this also on the gussets. So basically everything is getting felled. I don't want any raw edges showing because it's going to be laundered a lot. That's what the hem's going to look like. It actually doesn't have to be as thick as I thought it was going to have to be. So I just fold it under. I don't know, maybe three eighths of an inch, and then maybe an inch after that. I'm just kind of just guesstimating. Until it looks fairly straight. I'm going to do this with the running stitch as well. And then we can start putting together sleeves. I think that's going to be the next logical step. Chemises are hemmed. So now I'm putting on the sleeves. So here's my gusset here. Well, so I guess it's a pentagon. And I just pin the sleeve on, very long sleeve. I probably could have made it several inches shorter, 
Um, it'll just be a really poofy sleeve, which is fine for the 30s. So I'm just going to stitch this on with a run and fell seam just as before. Honestly, I probably could have also made this just a um, little diamond shape gusset um, and it would have worked just as well too and probably given me like several more inches, you know, fewer inches I suppose. Um, clearly on the original that I'm seeing, it looks very, very much like it's a pentagon shaped gusset which is why I chose to do it this way. You could also do it the diamond shape and then cut down this part or you could just do what I'm doing which is basically going to make a very, very poopy sleeve. So I have to fill all these seams and then um, at the neckline at this point we could go right ahead and put in a gathering thread um, for the yoke across the neckline and across the sleeves as well. Um, for the you know bottom part of the sleeve I need to sew on the, it's not really a cuff, I guess it kind of is a cuff, but the little band, that's the word I'm looking for, band, um, and then that sort of thing. I think I've decided not to do the little ruffles. Mostly because I'm feeling really lazy. And narrow hemming all that just does not sound like fun right now. And I am kind of trying to get a whole lot of projects done. So, in a very short amount of time. So, definitely going to make that a little, little possession there. But it's still perfectly correct. You do see some uses all the time without ruffles. So it's not an authenticity issue. Um, it's just going to be a little less fancy. And this is a thicker fabric too. So I wouldn't necessarily want um any more thickness in this it's already hard enough to sew through so um yeah if i ever did this with like a very thin cotton like a batiste or something maybe it would add the ruffle i don't think i'm going into with this so i'm going to finish putting these these sleeves and i'll come back once all the gathering threads are in and we'll put in the band together so now we're at the point where we're going to put in the sleeves so i went ahead and um attached the sleeves so here's the um the cuff i suppose this is the embroider part that we did and here's the lining. And I also ran a gathering thread on the sleeve itself. So we put the sleeve in and I ran a gathering thread. It's nice and giant sleeve. So what I'm going to do now is pin it, the cuff to this and gather it. And with this I've been doing a double running stitch. So going all the way around with a running stitch and then going back um, again with the running stitch. And the finished stitch looks basically like a lock stitch that you do on machine, which is like the basic machine stitching that people do. Um, it looks like a lock stitch. So um, that seems to be holding it pretty secure. It's a little bit faster than, say, just using a back stitch. And as per usual, I just use my gathering thread here um, to sew it instead of wasting more thread. I'm trying to go through all the layers without killing my fingers. I have a thimble in the other room. My fingers are always really messed up though. Particularly when I do like a whole lot of 1830s stuff, like the hand sewing, all at the same time, or back to back. My fingers look a hot mess. This one's just entirely covered in pricks. I don't even know if y'all can see that, but that one is. This one's kind of just messed up. So, um, definitely wear a thimble. I don't like wearing two thimbles. I can wear one either on this finger or on this finger. I can't always manage both. It just doesn't feel right. But I need to be wearing one on each finger. Alright, with the cuff put on, I just ironed it back the lining. And now we're just going to whip stitch this. And then we'll be done with the sleeves. I'm going to go ahead and put in the gathering threads for the neckline. And then... I have to do my embroidery on the yoke before we can actually put on the yoke. There are no closures in the original chemise. It looks like it just pulls over your head. So I didn't add a button to this one. I plan on doing the same thing. Just pulling it over the head. So there are no buttons to buttonholes to do, which is yay, a big plus. So really it's just the yoke. And I'm coming up on the end of this one. So I've been doing some pretty big gathering th stitches, especially right across the uh, sleeves. 
and kind of getting a little bit smaller across the, I guess, bust line, neckline, whatever that is. Because there's a lot more fabric to contain at the sleeves than there is anywhere else. So we have very poopy sleeves. And I'll probably put on the yoke the same way I put on the cuffs, which is to do a double running stitch. Somewhat minor adjustment. Um, I got one chemise done just to try it on before I finished the yoke of the other chemise. And I'm um, having some fitting issues, mainly in the gusset. So here's the chemise we've been working on. This part is not wide enough. And I made this gusset as wide as my other 1830 chemise, thinking that should obviously work. But it doesn't. So not sure why, but it doesn't. So I'm going to recut this. This is about um, how many inches wide? Six and a half inches wide. And so I'm going to cut the new one 10 inches wide, which means it'll be like 9 inches um, once all the seams are taken up, which will give me 3 extra inches, and I think that's going to be plenty. A little bit roomy. I probably could have done like an inch, you know, smaller, but 10 inches was a lot nicer than 9 inches, so um, it should be fine. A little bit too big is better than a little bit too small. So I am going to have to take out on both chemises basically all the sleeve stuff that I did, but um, I need a chemise that fits. So that's going to have to happen. So I'm cutting a new chemise. I cut it 11 inches long by 10 inches wide. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the, uh, I guess, the diagonal part. Now I get to go unpick some nice hand stitching that we all did and do it again. So minor issue, but hopefully this will fix it. So I'm going to probably so I'll come back when there are new gussets and we'll finish the yoke together all right so it took most of the day but I got some gussets replaced at least I one chemise the other chemise has still has these old gussets so I don't know today was an off day for me I kept doing the seams wrong I think I had to do the sleeves about six different times because I kept doing them backwards or upside down or inside out or something um and I get one fix and I mess up something else so it was just it was a weird day but it is, the sleeves are on now, and I'm putting on the lovely yoke. So I did sew the yoke lining to the yoke itself. There's the embroidery part. Um, and I stitched that together, and I'm working on stitching it to the actual chemise. So there's the inside of it, or the right side of it, really, stitched down. What I'm basically doing, and I have the other side that I haven't done yet, is the sleeves kind of have this nice little right angle here. And there's also a point on my yoke. And so I'm matching the right angle with the point. And so the sleeves are very, very much gathered. And the uh, chemise itself isn't as gathered. But it seems to be working pretty well. And I've been doing it halfway. And then I'll do the other half. That's what I've been doing. It seems to be working pretty well. At this point, I get to sew that down. I've been doing the same thing I did before, which was just the running stitch and then going back the other way. So I'm doing a double running stitch. Um seems to be holding pretty well, so that's what I've been doing. Again, I'm using the gathering thread as my sewing thread. I think I am going to wash this before I try putting it on to see if I can get more of the um, blue marks out from the embroidery because they're still fairly vi visible. Um, not so much on the sleeves because I did actually like leave the sleeves in there for a couple days, but they're still, or leave the sleeves in water for, I like to I left the sleeves in water for a couple days, and um, they're not perfectly clear, but they're pretty clear. But I um, figured just washing it, see if soap and water will get it out. So, like, there's still a little bit of blue. I don't know if I'll be able to see it on screen. There's just very faint traces of blue in there. So, I would like to see if I can get it all the way out. But the yolk itself, I actually haven't tried putting in water at all. So, might as well just try you know, wash it and see if that will just fix it right off the bat. Very last step, uh, at least on this chemise, I still have another chemise I had to change out gussets on, but I'm just going to whip the inside of this yoke to the chemise. Then we get to try it on and see if my fix actually fixed anything. Really hoping I didn't spend the whole day on nothing. If this isn't fit, I might throw this project in the trash. Okay, it won't actually go in the trash. It'll go into a dark corner of the closet, and I'll pull it out in like two years to fix it. It's going to be really pretty when it's done, though.
whether that's in five minutes or in three years. The embroidery turned out really well. It's really reminiscent of the original embroidery, despite the fact that I changed the stitches up. And it's a really pretty design. I like this. I like the yoke style a lot more than I like the uh, square necked Regency style that I did before. So I'm really hoping this works. And here's our lovely chemise, or one of them at least. Um, it turned out really cute. I think they're absolutely adorable. Um, much, much prefer this version of the chemise than the uh, Workman's Guide ones that has like the Regency like square necked ones. These are far more comfortable. They're staying on. They're just so much better. I just, I see why people start moving towards the yoke chemise. Like, just saying. So very, very happy with them. Um, they fit. It's slightly, it's, it's not tight. It kind of goes in slightly. It could have been maybe an inch bigger, but it's not tight. I can still move comfortably. So um, definitely made the right decision on changing that. But they are so pretty. And here's like the embroidery. I don't know how well it's going to show up on screen. But you see the blue came off. Like that's helpful. There's the shoulder. And the back. They came out a good length though, just like slightly below the knee. So that's why I like my chemises. So that's always a plus. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, very nice and comfortable. The linen cotton blend, uh, nice and thick. So this is probably going to be the chemise that I use, or you know, between the two of them. Um, the chemise I'm going to use for like when I do demonstrations of getting dressed <laughs> I'm in front of people because I feel like it shows less and that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. So um, yeah, this is probably what I'm going to use for those, but it's very comfortable. It's not tight anywhere. It's nice and loose. Um, it falls into folds, but it's not overly full. You don't want an overly full chemise because you have all these folds underneath your corset and that can be kind of uncomfortable as well. So I think it's just a, the right amount of fullness. Sleeves are um, nice length. I think they're really good. Uh, very full, which is fine because this is the 1830s. We do puff sleeves. So they'll go really well under any puff sleeves. And um, yeah, other than that, completely hand-sewn chemises. I'm very, very pleased with them. <laughs> very pleased with them. So the other one's here. Um, all nicely fixed up as well. So here's the front of it. There's still some blue marks, especially on the necklines, but um, I think it's the one I didn't soak prior to washing it. So I washed them both in the washing machine and most of the blue marks got on, but um, the sleeves and one of the yolks I actually soaked um, in water for a while before I did any of that. And one of them I didn't soak. So the one I didn't soak, you can definitely see more blue on it. I think actually it's this one, it's the one I'm wearing. Cause there's like blue here. And um, there's just slight, slight bits of blue on this one. But I think whenever I wash them again, it'll probably just come right off. So I'm not concerned about it. Um, mostly because A, they're an undergarment. No one's really, well, everyone on the internet now gets to see them. And um, anyone who's around when I do my demonstrations is going to get to see them as well. But so I shouldn't say no one should be able to see them. But um, they're not readily seen by the vast majority of people. And it's going to come off eventually anyway, and you wash your chemises every time you wear them. So um, now I have four chemises, my two favorites, and the two that I don't particularly care for. And of course now I have to make another chemise, actually two more chemises. You know, at this point I have made two of every kind of chemise, and I feel like that should just keep going. Like every time I make a chemise, I should make two of them, um, a pair. And so now I'm going to make two more, because I bought an original 1830s chemise, and I feel the absolute need to copy that one. So eventually, probably next year or something like that, we'll do that. But as of right now, four chemises gets me through pretty much everything. So my general rule of thumb um, for an event is to have a chemise for every day, and plus an extra, just in case, because you never know. You never know when you're going like, to fall into a mud puddle or, I don't know, fall in a creek or get rained on. And, so many things. Sometimes it's just so hot um, during the day and you sweat through all your clothes and you feel disgusting. It's amazing what happens when you just strip, wash yourself off, put on a fresh chemise, and then get dressed. How, how refreshed you feel. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely recommend that. Uh, set of undergarments for every day, plus an extra. Um, really, I don't know what there is really to say about them. I'm 
very thr thrilled with them. I'm going to keep this pattern. If I ever need new chemises for the 1830s, this is what I'm going to use. Uh, if anyone ever asked me what kind of chemise they would recommend, or what I would recommend for them, yoke chemises, way better. <laughs> like them a whole lot more than the square necked ones. Now, if I did the square necked ones, I did make the wrong size, and they ended up being really, really big up here. I should have cut them smaller at the neckline. But still, like these a whole lot better. So, um, I have an event this coming weekend. Um, this is back in May, though, so like <laughs> this is way before y'all are seeing this. But I am going to do a getting dress routine, and um, I will shall have a new chemise to do this in, which is great. So, yay. Very glad I got them done. But thank you so much for joining me today as we made a couple of hand-sewn chemises from the 1830s. Um, I think they turned out rather well. I think they look like the original. I think they are um, very pretty, but also very practical. And thank you so much for joining me today, and I shall see you in the next video.